Our next guest needs no introduction. Mm -mm. So I'm not going to. How you doing, John? I'm outstanding, Jeff and Kevin. Don't you love this time of year? This is a lot of fun. Huh. Why? Well, we I'm just must kidding. I'm just kidding. We know. I'm just kidding. We know. It's, just kidding. We know it's John Morosi. I'm sports. just kidding. Yes. We could be on the precipice of history. And now I'll tell you a quick story. I once, uh, so uh, we're coming up on so August of 2012. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but we, we welcome my, my oldest daughter, Gabriella, into the world. And I'm getting ready to leave the, the hospital with my wife. And I'm getting phone calls. Ken Rosenthal, this Dodgers Red Sox blockbuster is going on Ooh. with a quarter of a billion dollars happening. Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford, the whole deal. And, and she looks at me as we have the infant carrier leaving the hospital, and, and she says, do you really have to take this call? And I said, yes, I do. This is the biggest trade in the history of baseball. That was true at the time, but Adrian Gonzalez and Carl Crawford and a quarter million dollars, a quarter billion dollars, will look like something we did uh, when we were 12 years old trading baseball cards compared to what Otani is if he actually gets traded two weeks from tonight. Yeah, I, you know, it, I mean, God, listen, we have, we've had so many people on talking about Otani. We had Joe Madden on, and I've asked them all the same question. How do you put a value in this guy? And, you know, Joe's answer was, and, and I think it, it, was, it was kind of interesting. He said, well, and he was thinking of him as a free agent. And he said, I think you almost have to sign him to two contracts. One Shohei Otani, the pitcher. One Shohei, Ot Shohei Otani, the hitter. Now, you, you can't do that. A player obviously can only have, can only have one, contact, uh, one contract in baseball. But I think right. what he was getting at is you've almost got to approach this as five years down the road, he's healthy and doing both. Five years down the road, he's healthy, but he's only doing one. Five years down the road, he's healthy, but he's only doing the other thing. And then five years down the road, he's healthy. And he's kind of doing a little more than you thought. I mean, it's it, it it's hard to to fathom how much it is going to cost to keep Shohei Otani or to get Shohei Otani. And 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 John, it's for that reason. If I don't know what he's going to be valued as a free agent, I don't know if I can value him for an in season trade either. I just don't. Yeah, and that's why it's so difficult. And and let's think about this too, Jeff. Not only is this an unprecedented player to have to, to price in the market, and, and I actually had somebody tell me recently that maybe the Angels could ask for what the Padres had to give up to get Juan Soto a year ago, wow. even with two and a half years at that <laughs> time, as opposed to half a year, because of just how unique Otani is. Now, this to me, and we, we talk about a lot of the impediments to a deal with Otani, and there are many of them because, oh, by the way, the Angels had a huge win last night. Let's say mm -hmm. they find a way to sweep the Yankees in this series, a big if. Which, but possible. So they do. Then, then what happens? So yeah. then the better they play, the more the trade possibility diminishes. But to me, one of the most, one of the most difficult things to wrap our minds around right now is this blister issue that he's going through. Mm. And, and how little he's pitched. You look at the last, like, 20 days, I think he's thrown 10 innings. Right. And that's, that's not enough. Now, he, oh, by the way, he might hit 60 home runs this season, so <laughs> we, we know we have an idea of what that's worth. But if one of the most important things that he does, which is pitch, if all of a sudden that becomes problematic – then how do you value that? I, I think a lot of teams are going to be watching his next start whenever it happens, hopefully later on, later on this week, to see what this blister issue is because we've all seen it, and Kevin can speak to this. Sometimes when you get a guy with a blister, it bothers him for six weeks. Yeah. And six weeks from now, we're in September. So there's, when you're talking about a small sample size, and I get it. Someone might say, well, John, you're talking about the last two starts of someone who's one of the elite talents in the world. Well, of course, it's, it's a small sample size. But this is a small sample size trade. It's not a 10-year right. deal. <laughs> it's a two-month two deal. And, and I think that's why he's so special with everything that he does. But if half of what he does is attached to a question mark right now, 
I have no idea what a fair market value is. Yeah, I, I, I talked to somebody in this organization about Shohei Otani, not about whether or not they were interested in, interested in him or anything like that. But uh, the point I made was thinking back to that game where he did develop the blister. How many trade deadline acquisitions could you have where the dude develops a blister but still hits in that game and mm-hmm. hits a home run? I mean, it's, it's like, but and then this person kind of touched on what you did, and his point was okay, I I get it. But he said, "Here's the thing: if you trade for this guy, and John, you're right, it's a short term trade. You don't want Shohei Otani to not be able to make those two starts because right. you are going to have to do a lot of work with your rotation to 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 accommodate this guy." And his point was, secondly, if you're Shohei Otani and you are about to become a free agent. Look, we know what happens when dudes pitch with with blisters. It can create it can cr- create an issue sure. for you mechanically. Right. Uh, absolutely. Are you yeah. going, you know, are you going to risk some type of short-term arm injury? So there's I mean, there's a there's a ton of stuff going on here. Right. No, you're right. And, and I think a couple of things that, that that you raised there that that I want to touch on. The a couple things. The, the circumstance where the Mets have been mentioned as a possibility for Otani, maybe not now, but in the winter time, guys, in, in their present constitution, I don't see how that works. Mm. Because Jeff, as you point out, on the day that you acquire Otani, you have a six-man rotation yep. just because of how you have to utilize him. Well, how's that going to work when the Mets have often given Senga an extra day? Verlander and Scherzer are 40 years old, and they need a little bit of extra rest. You, you, you can't have everybody get an extra rest. That's, not, that's just not, that's mm-hmm. not really how it works. I mean, you have to. There are certain guys that are going to have to be able to be consistent for you in terms of how often they start. And if you start layering in Shoei on top of a rotation with a lot of guys that say, "Yeah, I can only do this day or that. I have to have an additional day here," th- that's not really going to fly here. So I. I Oh, Ooh. boy, he's on a roll, too. He had hit his that stride. That sound. Ooh. Wow. We haven't heard that in a while. No, we haven't. Dropped calls are the bane of my existence. Are they really? Not really. It happens. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, but, and, and one, he was one, on a roll, though. One thing, well, we know, one thing we know about John. He won't miss a beat. He won't miss a beat. Mm-mm. He'll come back, and he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be good to go. But... I mean, again, this gets this whole thing with Shohei Otani. It's just the the the. I don't know. I mean, I know what he is, but I don't know how to place a value on that. Let's, uh, John. Yeah. Thanks for your patience. Please continue yeah. your thoughts about uh, yeah. about so, Shohei. Right. The other thought I have, and, and this is where I think it's going to be so interesting. I realize it's it's a short term trade, but it's going to be a forever link, and this is where teams that we don't often talk about of being the most aggressive on a deadline deal, the Rays, the Orioles, the Reds, any number of teams that are just kind of emerging. Let's say Otani wins the World Series in your uniform. Let's say Otani hits 60 home runs, which by the way, he's on pace to do in your uniform. And on the front page of every newspaper in Japan Mm. for weeks and weeks and weeks, it's the logo of the Baltimore Orioles. It's the logo of the Tampa Bay Rays. It's the logo of the Cincinnati Reds, who for a long time never had a Japanese player. I was going to say, never is, mind the signage in your ballpark that you are going to, exactly. to get. Exactly, It's a franchise changer, and not just for now. I mean, think about, to your point, and Jeff and Kevin, you, you know what this ballpark is like for years. Think about what Seattle became Thanks Ooh. to Ichiro mm-hmm. and, and how many people have visited that ballpark because he played there. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the coolest parts about Japanese culture and Japanese baseball, the way that the history is so revered. If Shohei becomes a part of your history for these two months, and I don't expect him to sign with Baltimore for the long term or Tampa necessarily, but if it's for two months or three months, when you think about October, that can change your franchise forever. JP, what what if you're just looking for a hitter? Say you're the Yankees. <laughs> say you're Seattle. Say you're the Jays, and you're just looking for the hitter. You think they'd kick the can on that? Maybe. 
You don't need him as a pitcher. I, I, right. I, I think so, Kevin. And it's a, it's a fair question. I, I think for the Jays, I don't know candidly if they have yeah. the high level prospects to make this deal work for him, to be honest with you. I think at this stage, if, you know, if all of a sudden there's, you know, again, you look at the big picture, they're a team that, that, that maybe as you look at the way they're constructed, and again, it would have to hurt with a, maybe even like a young major leaguer that ends up going in the deal. If, if, if the angels say, Hey, we want someone who's controllable for longer than show a, we want your shortstop. Mm. I mean, like, they may yep. say that. Sure. And, and that's <laughs> where I, I, the, the Jays just can't do that. Uh, what would you suggest or who would you suggest would be a trade partner for the Jays at the deadline? Great you know, I've been, uh, look, I know there's a stuff out there about, about Marcus Strom and I'm kind of more interested in Cody Bellinger, frankly, if I'm the Jays, because I do think I need an, uh, an, I think I need an impactful middle of the order bat. But then John, the team that I keep, I, I kind of keep gravitating towards is the St. Louis Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals, yeah. they got three. I mean, I'm not talking Goldschmidt and Arenado. They got three guys that a lot of teams would take and put in their starting lineup. Three, three oh, outfielders, yeah. three everyday players. What, what do you see the Jays? Who do you see the Jays matching up with? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I, I do think that there's a, a really natural fit there with the Cardinals because of how many position players they've got. I, I do think that they want close to the majors, almost ready pitching. Mm -hmm. which, which the Jays have some of. Um, and I think that it's interesting that the Cardinals have talked about, and John Mozeliak said this a couple of days ago, they have to really reevaluate how they have looked at pitchers for a long time. Right. And, and they may, they may look at uh, maybe their, their perception of the Jays system is better than what, than what the industry as, as a whole has said. And I think the Jays do have some younger pitching sort of at the double A level and below mm -hmm that the Jays I know internally are excited about. And so I, I think it, it maybe won't be the most obvious fit in terms of what St. Louis would be asking back. But I, I do think that the Cardinals have what the Jays are looking for. It's balance. It's maybe some left-handed power still, you know, and one team I would mention too, and, and we talked, I know the three of us talked uh, right around the deadline last year when we were in studio together uh, about the Tigers and that the Tigers still have, I, I know it was a different GM for the Tigers then, uh, but remember we, the three of us talked about Foley and Lang. Guess mm -hmm. what? They're, they're still there, and and I think Michael Lorenzen is a potential uh, starter reliever. I, again, maybe not what the Jays need as much because Michael is still more of a starter. But I, I do think the Jays need some bullpen. Uh, they need some some lefty bats, maybe a Kerry Carpenter, who I think will have a high price tag because he's controllable in Detroit, but I think that's one name to watch for the, for the Tigers. But I, I think that, you know, Bellinger makes more sense to me than Carpenter because uh, Bellinger is a rental Carpenter is controllable. So the price is going to be higher. Whereas Bellinger, I think that we all believe that, um, that, that he is likely to be moved. And I think with Stroman, th there is a lot of interest in, in the story and, and, and would he be received quite the same way coming back? Let's be honest. You know, the three of us can talk about how Marcus left and what it was like then, but basically nobody on the active roster has a recollection of that. Like yeah. they don't, they don't care. They, they really do not care. That was, that's like ancient history. Mm. So however, however controversial things happened uh, as, as Marcus got to the end of his tenure in Toronto, I would say has almost zero relevance. I mean, at the end of the day, a couple of things that, I, that I'll always remember about Marcus in Toronto. Number one, he took the ball. Number two, he helped give this team competitive credibility at a time where they really were, were searching for that. And, and he's been durable and he pitched a magnificent game against Baltimore in the, in the, in the wild card game when, when everything was on the line. So for me, uh, I, I see more reasons to to say yes than no when it comes to Stroman going back to Toronto. JP, two teams for me. What do the Padres do, and what do the Yankees do? Yeah, wow. Uh, so the Padres, I, I, I spoke with someone about them earlier today. I, I think, and obviously I know there's a lot of interest with, with them being in town now. I mean, I feel like they are still in, in buy mode nominally. Um, I, I don't think that they're going to trade Soto now, unless they totally stumble in the next 10 days. 
Um, I do think that Snell or Hayter become a bit more realistic. I think they want to try to find a way to add some offense, if anything. Uh, they just haven't hit in the way that we thought they were going to. Like the second half of their lineup just has not shown up in the way that we expect. They've had to make some roster moves, including today, just trying to shake things up. So I, I just think that their their offensive concerns uh, at the moment are just so significant that um, that they, for now, Kevin, they're saying that they are still in buy mode. But I, I do think that they may move guys like Snell and Hader when it becomes clear that they're just not going to be an especially competitive team in, in the playoffs. Now with the Yankees, goodness. <laughs> um, I mean, so they, they fired their hitting coach. They hired Sean Casey. Clearly, the, the Yankees, they've had some years in which they've actually pivoted. I mean, really the one outlier year when they became the seller was when they traded Chapman and they ended up getting, um, they ended up getting Glaber Torres. That and also Andrew Miller that year. It, it doesn't feel like to me that they're in in full on sell mode. Rodon is just going to make his third start this week. Um, goodness, I, I I just as as bad as things have been, th- they're still hoping that Judge comes back. I, I just think that that this is not the year to take things apart. And candidly, I'm not even sure what that would look like if they did. I mean, who would they trade? Clay Holmes, I, I just, I don't, I don't think they're going to do that. I think position player wise, their, their guys are either not performing or clearly a part of the future. You know, LeMay was had a down year. Donaldson's hurt again. The outfield, they gave Hicks away and he's playing better now at Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bader's been hurt. I, I don't, I don't know who you give up. Uh, I mean, Rizzo, probably not. I, I, I just think that this team, um, it might not be their year but I just don't see a path for them to be sellers in a really meaningful way. They, they may just end up being stuck because there's just no really good options in front of them right now. Yeah. I'll tell you, I got a scenario rumbling around in my head. I Uh-oh. mentioned it to Barker earlier today. How about Mark? How about Marcus Stroman joining the Orioles? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that heads would explode in Jeff. Toronto. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, that's actually pretty true. Uh, and, and, and as you know, I, I mean, just think about this, by the way, Marcus would have zero issue walking into Rogers center as, I mean, oh think about all no. the energy that, I mean, he would, he would love that. I mean, the only thing that would be better <laughs> than the only thing better than Stroman pitching in a playoff game for the Jays at Rogers center would be him in a visiting uniform at Rogers center in a playoff game. Absolutely. I mean, just, the, the, the theater of it all, like, I, I think it would be great. Um, hey man, he was great in the world baseball classic. Again, I mean, he may have his detractors at different times in his career. He has never backed down from a big game. No, and I've no. always loved that about him. Absolutely. Absolutely not. And, uh, you know, his, he, he, his teammates, his teammates seem to, I mean, his teammates seem to like him, you know, the best ability anybody has is availability. And, and one thing about Marcus, yeah. God love him, man. He'll take the ball. He'll take the ball and you're going to get, you're going to get five really good innings out of him. Maybe more, uh, quite often more. John, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah. As always, travel safely. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, guys. I can't wait. I'll, I'll, I'll phone in from uh, as the week goes along for my travels to see Shohei tomorrow night in Anaheim and then Cooperstown with a couple Jays this weekend. Mr. Roland, Mr. McGriff. Should be a lot of fun. Awesome. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks, man. Be well. See ya.